Yeah. <laughs> See, the thing is, like that. Yeah, I, that I, was... love, I love double your size. There we go, that's better. I just... Yeah. So if you go closer, then I... I'll do the whole I... thing like this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys, you must have, you must recognise him from at least two Housemates Series 1. Really? And the man who kicks the camera. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a uh, stand-up comedian and writer and hat wearer, Ben Aaron. Author. Oh, do you prefer author? No, no, no. Then, as then well as, as oh, well as. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. do it again? No. Okay. Oh, do you want me to do, you want me to do it no, again? No, that's fine. Do you prefer, what would you prefer me to introduce you to? It doesn't matter. Is there like a top three you prefer? Um, comedian, mm-hmm. BAFTA shortlisted director, mm. disco dancer. How have you found uh, sort of experiences through the last, you know, like 20 to, what were you, like 21, uh, 20 to 30 years has evolved your writing and your stand up? All I heard was, so old man, tell us oh, your Oh no, tales. sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, right. Before you die, uh, yeah, what's, okay. what, what's funny, sir? Um, Thatcher? Thatcher interest you? Go, okay. Yeah. Oh, the mines. World War. Uh, um, World War One was World... the start. <laughs> <laughs> when um, I killed that mammoth. <laughs> what, what, what was your question? I, all I, heard was I old. just wanted to offend you. <laughs> right, right, yeah, all I heard was... Straight, <laughs> straight into the interview. <laughs> You're old, what's yeah, that like? Your generation... Because you've gotten to a stage in your career when you're like a little bit older and you've got kids and you've got a wife and stuff like that. Have you found that gaining all these experiences has completely evolved your um, your writing and your stand up from when you were like, you know, like in your early twenties? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, life experience has um, uh, added texture to what I write, mm. but I don't know if I'm a better writer. I in my stand up, there's still two or three lines that I do now that I've done from day one, and that's not just because of laziness. Mm. Some of it's because of laziness, but a lot of it's because it's probably the funniest bits, and those are the bits that I wrote first. In fact, I only go into stand-up because I, I had a, um, a gag. I used to write for um, TV for sketch shows, and I had a gag that I'd written, and nobody'd buy it, and I thought, this is really funny, and they kept saying, no, it's not funny, it's just not. I thought, no, it is, which is why I did stand-up, because I wanted to try it out. And that line, for that reason, I still have in my, in my set. But yeah, I mean, now I talk about having kids on stage, which also I didn't do before because I didn't have them, mm. and it would have been ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so I talk about that. So I've and also my stand-up when I started was all gag, 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 and now it's more um, elongated stories and not funny. So it's it's moved on. Yeah. <laughs> I've I've taken comedy to a new level where it's more or less drama on stage you're right you're right i think the crying bit's pretty good that's all right <laughs> it's, it's you know what people think it's affected but it's it's genuine yeah <laughs> i really this guy's great yeah. i just don't know anymore <laughs> please like me um so uh in answer to the question yes i'm a lot older than you are i think that's the question yeah yeah, yeah that's what i wanted really yeah yeah okay thanks um do you find do you find that you've gotten better or do you think it's more of a just yeah, I, I think I'm certainly better as a stand-up. I'm more experienced because I've gone through being heckled um, and knowing how to deal with things and turning up mm. to an audience that don't want me mm. or comedy or anything. You've got to stop doing the funeral gigs. I, I know, that, <laughs> but they, they pay well. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I remember doing a huge gig in the Park Lane Hotel in London, big black tie thing. And a newsreader, TV newsreader, had hosted this big set as an award ceremony. Um, and they'd been sitting there for hours and hours, and I was meant to be going on. And then the host of the evening said, uh, anyway, but thanks, that's the end, that's the last award. And they went, yeah. And he said, now the bar is open. And they went, yeah. And he said, and we're going to start you know, a disco. And they went, yeah. So anyway, thanks very much. And they all started getting out. Then he saw me and went, oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. There's gentlemen, sorry, we've got a comedian. Uh, and they all went, no, boo. So uh, I had to go on stage to yeah. that. You fighting were... through people who are going to the bar yeah. and tell them the bar actually isn't open yet. They have to sit and listen to me. Yeah. So that, that so you learn through those things. Um, that so... was the hardest two hour stand up set that you've was... ever done. <laughs> yeah. I was only meant to do 10 minutes. I thought, no, stuff them. Yeah. Yeah. They, they hate me. I'm going to make them hate me more. So, um, yes, you know, you learn how to do different things and you learn how to deal with different audiences. And, you know, I've got, I've done, what, three. Edinburgh shows, so I've got you know more material than I had when I started, mm-hmm. and I can go a different way. The, the I think the audience I find the most difficult is a student audience because okay. I there's nothing where I can go. We've got that in common. Here's here's mm-hmm. here's the Venn diagram. Here's here's this bit. Wait, no, no, I I don't know what to talk about. Um, 
you know, you try and, you know, fist pump the audience. Right. They, they, they just think <laughs> that's that's the weirdest amazing. sex move. You should... <laughs> well, you you just try anything. <laughs> but you know, I I just don't um, I don't know saying that I did um, a gig of my daughter's school mm. last week, yeah. which is one of the most fun gigs I've ever done, only because I managed to make. Um, fun of the new boyfriend who I hadn't met. Oh, good. On stage. Yeah. And introduced myself to him on stage. Mm. And in front of all her peers, said to him, uh, "If you touch her, I'll break your arms." Right. <laughs> so that was fun. So I enjoyed that. What a horrible way to meet your yeah. your girlfriend's father yeah. is with him standing on stage in front of you, your girlfriend, and all your classmates. Yeah, and threatening to break your arms. And threatening to break his arms. Yeah. Uh, which I couldn't do because he's a lot bigger and stronger than I am. Don't admit you could, you you couldn't take him. Yeah, you know, cut that bit. Yeah, <laughs> I have uh, I have offered him to arm wrestle. Why? I don't know. Why? That's my daughter says. Why are you asking to arm wrestle? I, I don't know. I, I I've never, I've never had an do. interest in arm wrestling into my cell room. <laughs> I just went. I want to prove who's the boss. <laughs> So um, so I'm challenging him to an arm wrestle. Yeah. It's a, it'll be televised. Oh, okay. I'm going to raise money for charity. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. So uh, you know. is, that, is that before or after you challenge him to an 100-metre sprint as well? <laughs> I'm not going to do that. We might do a three-legged race together. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, that's weird. It's my daughter's got a so that's How old is um, he? Uh, 36. He's one of the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, he, uh, what, I don't know, 17, I guess. Oh, okay. How old is she? Four. <laughs> Okay. What is it wrong? No, no, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She likes him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're going on well together. He does stand out in the nursery group. Yeah, I can fine. imagine. Uh, no, she's, what is she, 16, I guess. Mm. I guess. No, I she's 16. Yeah, yeah. She's 17 soon. Yeah, so when they're... you meet her, that's going to be great. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> so, uh, yes, they're both, you know, 17. Did I mention that? Yes, that, that's something I'm now doing in stand up, those, those. Oh, those stories. Kind of stories. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because. Um, whereas before I just do, you know, gaggy jokes and puns and stuff. I sort mm. of got older and, and uh, found a different voice, mm. I guess. And they say that, you you know, you don't find your voice on stage until you've been going about seven years. And I think it's actually longer than that. Um, in fact, now I'm seeing friends who are really now beginning, you know, 15 years and are now so much better than they were when they started mm. and, and are enjoying it more. Yeah. So, you know, it takes a while. You gonna do it? Yeah, I'm always thinking about it, and I'm always saying, "Well, maybe next month." But yeah, we should yeah, try. I'd love to. I I was looking forward to doing it during the the play that didn't really work out. Right. Which is a shame. Because I, I enjoyed that play. Yes. Yeah. You know? No, is it? No, that's a yeah, that's a shame. Mm-hmm. It, it's not forgotten about. My agent's read it. Loved oh, it. good. Really liked it. I've made a couple of very good suggestions. So mm-hmm. we will do it. Cool. The minute Idris Elba says yes. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Uh, which I assume is any day now. Any day. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I say got it. It was posted to somebody with his name. Right. So. <laughs> it's going to be Doctor Idris Elba. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could be anybody. But Head of gynecology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but you should do it tomorrow night. I'm doing um, for the first time in a hundred years uh, an open spot. Um, just to try out material that I've never done before and I don't want to do anything where everybody knows my name, not that everybody knows my name anyway, but I want to do it at a gig where nobody knows me and I won't start the usual way I start and I will all be new material like somebody starting from the beginning and mm. I'm really nervous. Uh, what's what's made you decide to do the Because new material? Um, I'm doing a new radio series and I've got to do material for it and mm. um, I won't be able to try it out without until I do it in front of an audience So um, until it's recorded. So mm. that's why I'm going to try out material. In front of strangers. Would you say that's the best way to? Because there's, what I found is obviously the, the the two ways that I've found getting into stand up at the moment, is you either go to classes, um, or you sort of do open mic nights. Which one do you, would you prefer? If somebody, if say I came over, say I'd really like to start stand up, would you suggest I go to classes first and gain well, let's, confidence, let's do or it. Let's, let's workshop it? Yeah? You can be that person. Okay. And let's see what I do, because I don't know. So you, okay. you come to me and, and do that. All right. Go on. Hi. Um, Hello. Okay. Um, I, I, I like your, your words that you say in a, in a microphone. Oh, right, um, yes. I'd I like to I'd like to also do that. Right. Okay. Because I saw you and thought I could do better. Right. Oh. Sorry. I mean, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Is there any... What would you suggest I do? Because I've I've got this really good gag that involves a puppet. Oh right. I'd love to give that a go. 
Very nice eyes. Thank you. Um, well, I suggest... You're very maybe, handsome yourself. I know. Um, <laughs> maybe do... Um, I would say, try it out. Where? Oh, we're carrying on. Okay. Um, try it out. We can cut to that. Try it out. Where? Um, well, there are many clubs around London that um, do evenings for such a thing as you are requiring to do. Mm. To do. So do that, like the King's Head in Crouch End, the Comedy Cafe in Shoreditch. Other places. <laughs> <laughs> there are other places. Yeah. Um, or I recommend a stand-up course. There's a man called Logan Murray who runs a stand-up course, which I think is one of the best stand-up courses around. Mm. And very famous comedians have done his course. Um, I also like to sort of bring up how we met. Oh, go on then, bring it up. Um, so I was in that leather gimp suit, and I said, oh, you've got nice eyes. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And I said, how much? <laughs> you went, for you, it's free. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, and then sort of maybe midway, you went, oh, I'm a, I'm a writer and stand-up comedian. And I said, oh, I'd love to be one of those things. These days. How can I get started? Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. And then, yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, did, when did I meet you? Um, I mean, was it like, it was... We don't, we don't bring up the name. But <laughs> no, no. no, I know that I know what the, the program was, and I know yeah. who the director was. Yeah. Um, but did I meet you in rehearsal? Or no. In the filming. I think we had met because I I was part. I somehow managed to blag my way onto the writers' team, and I think that's the first time I had met you. Oh, you're right. Who's in a writers? Of course, yeah. I was. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you wrote, um, yes. Yeah. I'd forgotten that. And yeah, came we to the writers' meetings. We met at the writers' meetings and then sort of fell in love. Fell in love, really. Yeah. No, I was just like, oh, you know, like he sort of revealed that you're a stand-up and stuff like that, and I just slowly yeah. tried and to use me. Yeah, use you. Um, I saw the hat and I was just like, <laughs> that's the kind of man I want in yeah, my life to be. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> to be in. Um, <laughs> but onto happier things. Yeah, yeah. So we met on in a writers' meeting and had quite a lot of fun. Yes, I enjoyed working with you. It was a lot of fun. Going out for lunch was nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and you were the youngest, I think, by about seventy years. Yeah, yeah. It was it was nice seeing uh, middle aged people think what yes. teenagers want is yeah. What what do you what do you think of that? Would you would you prefer to write for people of you know like your generation or do you think really that... another age thing? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean you've asked two questions <laughs> and they've both been what's it like me? <laughs> oh. Oh no, it's like I, I when I bring it up, it's not it's not in a way of like portraying that you're old. It's more of like because you're from a different generation. It's like speaking to someone from a different country. Because obviously, I haven't been <laughs> I haven't been around long enough to understand the things that you understand and to have the experiences that you've had. And I'm just curious to what kind of experiences that you've had and what your preferences are as somebody who's gotten older and started hating people from lower generations. <laughs> Why do you hate us? <laughs> Why do you keep using the word millennial? <laughs> Um, no, but honestly, do you, is there a preference? Do you prefer so to this work phone in... actually films things? Is that right? Is that yeah, 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 yeah. Technology. I know, right? Um, so no, you... I, I, I told I, I liked writing for women. I've been told I write women's dialogue very good, and mm. uh, apparently that's a skill that I didn't realize I had. But, but um, I do that, um, and I like writing for younger people. And again, having children makes it yeah easier, easier. because I know how they speak. Um, I, I, I don't think there's anything I don't particularly um, like writing for. I don't think there's. I, I, I'd li I'd like to think. I mean, I, I don't think I could write for people in other countries because I wouldn't know the, the way they speak. Spanish people, uh, uh, I could I could do because I, I know them, and it's sort of comedy from the seventies, right. really. Right. So as long as you do that, loads of jokes about breaking wind, mm. and. Um, then that's easy. Yeah, that's fine. But um, yeah, I don't think there's anything I don't like writing for. I, I'd like to think that I could. I think I'd have difficulty probably now writing for maybe older people because I haven't done that bit yet. Mm -hmm. Although in, in your eyes I have. But you know, I mean, believe it or not, there's a generation older than mine. <laughs> you know? No, I know. No. I know. Um, so I think I'd have more difficulty writing that mm. because. You know, even even though you know, I know how my parents talk. I think that might be trickier. But yeah, I have to I have to try it. Do you think Do you think you have 
an advantage over when you're writing for you know like teens and you know young adults and stuff like that do you think you have an advantage because you have kids yeah 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 because yeah, i know what the kids like i know what they watch i know what they find funny um mm-hmm. and you see a lot of people writing for kids and it's quite patronizing mm-hmm. um the, the the stuff they do and the, the way that they think kids speak um the way they think kids speak that wasn't really a good but sentence. weirdly that's how we speak <laughs> <laughs> oh right okay uh lol see i know all the terms um uh, lots of lovers to you as well oh i thought i knew them okay doesn't matter <laughs> um so yeah i like it and, and because yeah because i have kids I, I think it's um uh i think it's a fun thing to write i, I like writing kids sitcoms yeah and i've written what 30 odd episodes over the years so yeah. i'd like to do that a bit more um and stand up i'm enjoying book writing i mean i'd like to write another book um because the two i've done are doing okay Mm. What do you think? You must have read them. We're, we're friends. So them what, what do you think? Yet. I'm mm. sorry, I haven't read what? them. Just, I haven't read them just yet, but I know that the girl from the dis- disco tech and uh, the one about um, you getting your ad- identity stolen. But you've not read them. I've not read them, but I've read the title. Yeah. Have you seen all the episodes of Two House Pains? Yes. Wow. Even the ones that haven't come out. Yeah. I've seen yeah, them. it's technically you have. <laughs> yeah. I've seen <laughs> everyone. Yeah. Haven't I? Every single one. Well, I saw all the first series. And now I've seen the first and the second series. So that's virtually everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so all, the, all the important yeah. stuff. I think the first episode of the first series I think is probably my favourite. What, the one you're in? Yes. Yeah. Because I'm really good. You are very good in it. Very funny. Yeah. You should then cut to that episode. Yeah? Yeah. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have a look. See what you think. And then you cut to it. See? Yeah. Yeah. Seamless. <laughs> just helping. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just here to help. That's all I'm here to do. How did you feel? Like, I, I, I'll ask you briefly. I don't like... I, I, for some reason, I don't really like speaking about stuff that we've done because it's more about me than it should be. But how did you feel coming on set and stuff, like knowing full well that you had to like take your trousers down and watch me dance in a dress? I know it's the usual, I know it's the usual thing, but this time this is being filmed, so... Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, but because we rehearsed it so many times over the years. <laughs> Not knowing that we're rehearsing for something, no, we're no. just doing it. Yeah, yeah, because that's how the writer's days ended. Yeah, yeah. Um, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I, mean, I, you know, I haven't done that much acting, um, but I think of all the acting I've done, that's probably been my favourite. Okay. It was, it was just good fun. It was mm. relaxing. It, was, it, was, it just felt like messing around, playing out, and, mm. um, which is why I think you got to natural performances. Because it just felt, it didn't feel like it was being filmed. Yeah. So I think it was, um, I think it was good fun. Cool. And I've seen people say that it's the best scene in the series. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah, good. Um, so, yeah, it was fun. So I'd, uh, you know, I'd like to do it again because I, I wasn't asked to do it again. It, well, there was a discussion about you playing my dad. But, like, yeah, it didn't really work. As, as well as it should in the second series, but that doesn't mean that I won't be making anything. Yeah. So don't worry, don't worry, I will work with you again. Just saying. Just yeah. I need the money. What money? <laughs> I uh, need the money. <laughs> we need to talk about the money I didn't get paid for the year. Didn't, uh, didn't get the sandwich. Uh, thank you very much for working on it for 18 weeks, but that's just, <laughs> you know. Didn't even get a sandwich. Yes, you did. No, did. Yeah, you got I biscuits did. and no, stuff I didn't. like that. What he said was, Oh, uh, we've eaten, but there's a spare packet of hula hoops if you want them. <laughs> that does sound pretty much right. Yeah. That's because we were We've laughing. eaten, but there's a spare packet of hula hoops <laughs> if you want them. Yeah. <laughs> they were on the floor. In the... They, they were on the floor in a, in a Sainsbury's bag. Yeah. I'm glad you remember the important thing. Yeah, no, I just remember that. We've eaten. <laughs> I did say you were coming after lunch, though. I did warn you. One pound forty. It would cost one pound forty to have got me a sandwich. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of sounds like it does. <laughs> it's not like something I've remembered. Yeah. You've had a nice cup of tea today. Yeah. We yeah. could be charged for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. So I hope we get to work together um, again. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah, not lunchtime, obviously, because I'll be no, hungry. No, 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 because you'll be hungry, yeah. apparently. Yeah. Um, you don't like to eat before you come. No. <laughs> uh, 
anyway, enough about your marriage. <laughs> right. Um. So yeah, we should we should work together. Um. We should work together again. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd love to. I always have fun working with you, and I love hanging out with you as well. So you're a good man. Thank you very much. Mm. And you're all right. Thanks. I'll take that. <laughs> I think the final thing that I need to ask is, um, how did you get into writing, and what would you suggest to somebody who is getting into writing? Well. It's more difficult now because when I got into writing, which yeah, eighteen oh five, it was, was all all on the cave. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I remember putting my quill down and thinking, <laughs> I hope this parchment gets picked up. Um, I hope the weekly owl arrives. <laughs> yeah. um, I uh, you could send sketches in, and I right. used to send sketches into TV sketches, and and then somebody read them, which was you know in itself brilliant and then they contacted me and went oh, we really like these will you write some more and then commission me to write more and and that's how it got started really mm. sending in um yeah just writing sketches and then i wrote a sitcom and that won an award and then from that i became a member of uh, part of the award thing was um i became a member of BAFTA and the writers guild and i got an agent and it sort of you know went from there really but that was a time you could send in stuff. But nowadays, although nobody will take stuff, you can do what you're doing, which is absolutely the best way of doing it, and make your own stuff. Yeah. You make it, because a lot of the time, um, sadly, um, commissioners don't really have the foresight always to read a script and see it. Like the story of um, you know, The Office, which I think I did tell you about, that, that you know, he'd sent it in, and they'd read it and gone, no, it's not very funny because mm. they couldn't see it and then he had to make a little video and then they went oh that's brilliant well, mm. that's more or less what you read yeah, yeah, yeah. but because nowadays everything is visual and everybody sees things you know you're on your phone looking at things it's people don't have the imagination that they used to have so mm. it has to be shown and given so which is why what you're doing you know the, if if this the um possibility of doing what you're doing now was around when i was younger it would have been great I and mean, i would have done more stuff um, and I think the fact that you can now make something on your phone that is capable of going on TV mm. is, is phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, it's good that you're taking advantage of it, and I, I wish you well with it. Thank you. And you can easily do it now as well. I can do it now? Yeah, right now. All right. There's the camera. <laughs> yeah, well, I won't do it just now. Yeah. But no, I, I, you know, I want to do that. I want to film stuff. I want to get friends in it. I mean, I'll, I'll give them lunch if they're doing it as a favour. Mm. But it'd be nice to get people in to do things. <laughs> Just saying it's courtesy, that's all. But, you know. I'll make you a fucking sandwich now. No, man, I'm not hungry now. <laughs> I'm, t- I I'm was. too bitter. <laughs> I, I have been for 18 months as I filmed it. But, so, uh, yes, so good luck with, uh, with the next series of, uh, of Two Housemates. Thank you. And, you you um, saw the first, did you like the first episode? I loved it. I okay. thought the first episode was really funny. Cool. No, generally funny. I did warn you beforehand that I don't laugh very much. And then I went ahead and laughed. Mm. Which I really don't do. So yeah. for me to have laughed, it, it means uh, it's really funny. Or I was being patronising. Yeah, one of those. One of those. Uh, I'm not telling you which it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm a bit of an optimist, so yeah. I'll, take, I'll take the real laughter. Really? <laughs> then at night, I'll just think about it going, oh, shit. <laughs> Who'd have thought after series one that, you know, <laughs> they'd peaked? <laughs> <laughs> at age of 21, he's yeah. peaked. Is that what you are, 21? I'm 24 now, but I wrote, yeah. I wrote that when I was 21. Right. You see how you've matured as a writer. Yeah, I think I've gotten better. Yeah. But I, I kind of... I know this sounds really weird, but if it, I, cause I obviously want to get into stand up, and um, I I just feel as if I want I want to I want to be like you, sort of when I reach your age in eight to nine years. <laughs> you know, sort of like you know, got a few kids. You're taking influences from that, and you're taking influences from your life that you've already had. And, you know, like the experiences of creating a more developed and capable story that you're creating on. Uh, on stage with your writing and stuff like that, you're taking advantage of the things that you've, you've gained, and you're becoming better because of it. That's very funny. And I'd like to be like you because I'd like to be young again. So, here's an idea. <laughs> we've got a show. <laughs> <laughs> what say? For a couple of years, we swap. Okay. <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Have we done? Um, I think. Do you want to end on a song? Yeah, if that's okay. That's fine. What I've, song do you prefer? Do I've you want to go over to uh, I've got some lyrics with me. Oh, good. Thank you. Why did you write your own? Okay. Yeah, it's called Why Am I So Old? Right. And Hungry. Yeah, I don't know that song. <laughs> I wrote it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, actually, I, there is something else I want to ask you about, but whether you want to go into it or not. I do. Um, but there was a conversation that we were having beforehand 
um, about your feelings about how the stand-up comedy business is going at the moment oh, okay. um, and your concerns. Yes. Um, how come you feel as if it's not working as well as it could be, uh, the stand-up comedy world? Um, that is? What I think has happened, I think there's too much stand-up on TV, or there has been, and mm. I don't think the quality has been good enough. By that, I don't mean the acts themselves. I mean the fact that um, comedy on TV just isn't the same as going to watch it live. Yeah. And I know people... And when I tell them what I do for a living, they go, oh, I've never been to a comedy club. And I say, would you like to go? No, I've seen it on TV. I don't really fancy it. Right. So that's putting people off going. Mm. Because I, I just think watching, watching, I don't understand why people buy comedy DVDs. I know the market has dropped, but I don't quite get it because what, what do you, I don't know, you, you've got to be there. Yeah, it's sort of like watching, the atmosphere. it's like somebody said to you, do you want to go to Wembley or do you want to watch Match of the Day? Mm. You know, it's, it, it's not the same thing. Yeah. Um, and again, not saying that it's that the comedians are not good. I just don't think the medium of TV is right for stand-up. Right. Also, people now can go and see names from TV in big arenas. Mm. So you can either go and see, you know, Johnny Spangle at the local comedy club, mm. or you can wait and go and see Michael McIntyre in a, in a big arena. Yeah. So you know, you go well. I either pay ten pound for that, or I'll. Pen spend, you know, whatever it is, to go and see somebody that I know mm. and watch them on a screen. But anyway, yeah, you know, it, it's so that's that stopped it as well. Um, the a lot of the comedy clubs, um, sort of the larger chains, the comedy aspect of it has become secondary to getting people in, feeding them, getting them drunk, giving them a disco, doing these types of things. I think that that's affected it as well. There's a, not much um, returning business at these clubs. But saying that, there are some brilliant promoters out there who are, you know, struggling to make a living, but are still paying the acts well um, and putting on really good shows. Mm. But when you have, and a lot of them have told me this, you have audience members ringing up going, who's on tonight? Anybody from TV. Right. And, you know, it's, it's a difficult thing to compete with. Mm. And yeah, I don't think, if I were to make a living now as a stand-up, I'd have to be working at least five months a week. Right. So, you know, and with a family, I don't want to do that. Mm. So... Which is why, if I didn't have the writing as well, I I have trouble. I think. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's a shame, but I think I think the comedy circuit has peaked. But this happened in America. It it went massive and then it it dropped. And I think it's having a a, a shift here. And I think it'll go quiet for a couple of years and then probably build back up again. Yeah. That's what I think. Okay. Which sounds so sounds as though it's not really the right time for you to start doing yeah. it. <laughs> but you know, saying that people are making you know people are making a living. It's just it's just harder. Yeah. And that's all. Okay. So, um, but you know, if you're good, you'll shine through. But again, you know, making your own stuff is the best way of getting yourself out there. I yeah. think. So, keep doing it. Hey. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Not that old. <laughs> Actually, I would have to be a father. Yeah. If you started early. And grandfather. I wouldn't go that far. No, maybe not that far. No, no. we're not from Hull. <laughs> <laughs> Although Hub's a lovely place. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're geeking there on Saturday, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Come and see me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's that's everything. I, I really appreciate you coming down and sort of that's right. having a chat and let me offend you for a little bit. It's it's been a pleasure. Can I have a sandwich? No, no. But there are some hula hoops available if you. Yummy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm allergic to crisp. Well, thank you very much. Um, you, you you use Twitter quite often, don't you? I do. Um, Love it. You can follow him at, at Bennett Aaron. Yes. Yes. Which will come up here. Look at all that headspace that we've we've conveniently. It's brilliant. Not taken advantage of. You Look at all that as well. You can put my CV up there. You can show a video of me or something. I could, yeah. I oh, well, throughout. I could maybe if anyone would like to advertise because I think <laughs> it's <laughs> it's it's space space. Yeah. Oh, that's very funny. But you could. Uh, yeah, anything that I mentioned, you could actually put up. Yeah, there. I could just put on. We've got plenty of space. It wasn't deliberate, but we've got plenty That'd of space. That'd be very funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I talk about the books. Do you want me to put, do you want them book. to pop up? That'd be very fun. Yeah, sure. And I could, I could also, just in the description, I can put the where you can buy them as well. Do you want that? That'd be very good. Cool. Yeah. Do you want to advertise them quickly? Yeah. All right, go for it. Um, look into camera. Look into the eye of the camera. It's just there. Where? Uh, there. Is it? I've been looking yeah. there. Yeah, I, I, I do that as well. Because I'm an Isn't idiot. It? But yeah, it's just there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so my book, The Girl from the Discotheque, <laughs> is available to buy uh, from Amazon or from my website, benadaron.com, as is my other book, Heard the One About Identity Theft, 
which is also available from both outlets. Enjoy. So, yeah, you can buy his books and also, I mean, um, if you follow him on Twitter, you can also maybe go to one of his gigs. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. Thanks for mentioning the books. That's okay. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, good luck doing Yes. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. So you can well, do that again. What? I just spoke all of you. No, no, no. No, that's okay. That's all right. We've been doing that this entire time. Yeah, no, that's fine. So. Let's, let's do a proper ending. Okay. Uh, thank you Thank you. Oh, I'm no, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's your thing. You, you can thank me and I'll just say it's all right. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, follow him. He's great. I love him to bits. He's one of my favourite people. Oh, sweet. I don't think I'm a type anyway. Yeah. You do have quite the big lips. <laughs> Brilliant. Like airbags for your face. Mm. Mm.